Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do another Friday's Faves and Fails. This week, hopefully, I have uploaded this on a Friday because the main fail of last week was that it went up on Tuesday night at midnight. Um, I don't know what to tell you these things happen. So I've got a couple of fails first of all, a couple of disappointing products that I'm going to kick off with. And the first is going to surprise you, you're going to be shocked, but it's this. It's the Radox Muscle Soak. I don't know if they've changed it. I don't think they have truthfully. I think that when I first started using this, it was amazing for me. It really did kind of loosen things up and give me a, a tremendous amount of relief um, for the chronic pain I have it's tech neck, effectively. It's that kind of, just that part between your neck and your back, that part. I have got like a displaced thing, so I've got, I've almost got like that kind of dowager's hump situation going on. I'm always like this, I'm on a computer, I'm on my phone, I'm on my switch, I'm just always like this constantly. I've, or even with Milo and Ella, I'm like, just occasionally, just watch something like this. Just, you know, try and, try and straighten this up, because it, it's completely self-inflicted. Um, anyway, the Radox, really did make a difference. I spoke about it a lot for that reason. Lots of you said that you saw results as well. My disappointment is in the last few weeks slash possibly months, it's just not been doing it for me. It's not giving me any relief whatsoever. So I'm just giving you an update. It's very, very upsetting because this was my go-to and now it's just, I don't know if it's psychosomatic, I don't know if it was psychosomatic and now it's not anymore. I don't know but it's not doing it. Um, the other thing, I got this in my FabFitFun box. This is called Flight Mode Skincare High Altitude Hydration Mask. Now I'm gonna just put this away and keep it for my next flight because it is quite a nice, it looks like this. I should probably show you the product. It's quite a nice um, texture. It's a very thin kind of gel. I'll show you the back of my hand. It's like this. And very cool and refreshing. I can see if you were traveling how this would be a nice mask. It just is like very water-like. It's not much of anything. And it absorbs nicely. It is kind of refreshing is probably what I would say it is. Um, but hydrating masks, I tend to put them on overnight. And I can't tell you that this really has done anything at all. Even while I'm putting it on my hands, I'm like, it's fresh. It's very, very fresh. And I think if you, like it's absorbing quite quickly. If you wanted to keep your skin hydrated on a flight and you like once every hour or so were putting that on and it was perking you up and refreshing you, it's cooling on my hands, um, you might see a benefit. Also a little bit sticky, but I didn't really see any difference in my skin after wearing this ever. I've probably, I'm gonna say at least seven times I've tried this. And I just don't really see it. It says all skin types can use a boost of hydration. Sit back, relax, and get some beauty sleep while Australian wildberry harvest and hyaluronic acid work to hydrate and plump your skin. I'll leave in mask infused with aloe vera. That's totally what it's like. It's like aloe vera gel. Uh, cucumber extract oh, is infused with aloe vera and cucumber extract. So you will wake up feeling soothed and refreshed. And the best part, no wash off necessary. Uh, now you're on direct route to dewy, healthy, moisturised and hydrated results. I think that's the thing. It's soothing. I think this might actually be really, really nice if you've been in the sun and your skin is a little bit pink. Um, if you've got a little bit of sunburn, windburn even, you know, if your skin is feeling a little bit sore, this might be something that I'd pull out for that. But it's not really a hydrating mask in the traditional sense that I'm used to. So it's disappointing, but now I'm reading it and I'm thinking, mm, yeah, it is more soothing. It is more like a fancy aloe vera gel. So they're my disappointing products. Um, moving on to two very similar things. I mentioned these in a vlog last week. I I feel like it's gonna be super repetitive. For those of you who regularly watch me, you know about the back thing, you know about the Radox thing, you know about the facial hair thing, but we're getting into it anyway. I have a good amount of facial hair, a little bit here, normal amount, quite a lot here, goes down to about there. I think it's probably related to my uh, contraceptive, which is the Marina Coil. I think that also has a lot to say for my pigmentation. There's various things. For years and years, I have said how amazing the coil is. I still think it's great. I've got a video on the last time I had it removed and refitted, and it was quite traumatic, but I would still do it again because I have no periods and never have to consider 
contraception, which is great. Um, it's not really until the past year that I started to think maybe it could be to blame for some of the issues that I've got that lots and lots of people over the years have said maybe you've got like polycystic ovaries. There's loads of like diagnosis, diagnoses people have thrown my way when I've given my symptoms. But looking online, because I thought it was a localised hormone, this is something that's only happening down here. The reason I wanted the coil was because it wasn't going to affect my moods, it wasn't going to mess with my head, because previously I've had things like um, the depo prefera injection, which I, again, no period's great, once every three months, that's not the end of the world, um, but that really did mess with my head. And I'm not someone who can remember to take a pill every day, so I only had so many options. I never really kind of pinpointed it to, well, this is when this happened, because it all kind of coincided with, well, you're turning 30, these things are happening, these things are happening, and I just kind of put it down to a lot of other things, and I'm wondering now if perhaps some of the issues are related to that. Anyway, that's by the by. What I really want to talk about is the facial hair. So I was going through a phase of um, trying to pluck it all, and I just got too many occasions where I looked in the mirror and thought, oh my god, how long has that been there? Have people seen that? Like, there were big patches of hair that I missed. And so then I went back to shaving my face every day, and I just can't do it. My my skin is not tough enough. Um, and I don't want to toughen off my, up my skin because it gets thicker. Like, it, it adapts. Um, and if you're constantly shaving it, then your skin is not going to be as soft. So then I started shaving every day, and I just felt like I was just getting kind of rashy and horrible. Someone suggested that I use the panthen after any kind of hair removal because they, um, I think she said she was a beauty therapist and she used this on her clients after any hair removal. Just like regular bapanthin, like nappy cream. This is great. So when I was shaving every day, even when I was plucking, putting this on directly afterwards, fantastic. No terrible, right, occasional breakouts, but none of the rushing that I would get, none of the big breakouts that I would get after removing hair there. Well, I then received this, which is the Skin Doctor's Hair No More Hair Growth Inhibitor Spray. And I started using this instead of the bapanthin. Because I thought, well, if this is supposed to inhibit, it says it soothes once you remove the hair, and it's supposed to inhibit the hair growth. I'll give it a go. I was using it while I was shaving and not really seeing any difference. And then I looked at a review online and someone said that you're supposed to use it when you pluck the hairs. So now I'm going back to plucking. I'm still using this. I can't tell you it's amazing in terms of reducing the hair. Watch this space, I will let you know. Um, but I will say, these do very, very similar things. They both have that, like, antiseptic quality and the smell. They do very, very similar things in terms of, like, soothing the area and stopping any kind of breakouts. So I will go back to this if I don't see any result from this, because it is a little bit cheaper. But I think this is about eight or nine pounds a bottle. I'm only using it... I mean, I've gone down quite a lot because I started using it on my legs and I thought it's probably a pointless exercise. Um... But if I'm just using it on my face, this is going to last me ages. And it may end up that this is better value cost per use. Um, but I'm spritzing it, like, directly here, rubbing it all around my goatee area. And it's definitely soothing. It's preventing breakouts. Supposedly, it's going to prevent um, the hair from growing back as quickly as it usually does. Like I said, I can't tell you about that. But I'm just telling you right now, those two things are really, really great as antiseptic and soothing things immediately after hair removal. I get that this is not something that everyone struggles with. I don't want you to think that I'm talking about just random hair on your face. This is a lot of dark hair. Um, I've got pictures, and at some point, we will do a video just about this, because I really don't think people appreciate what... I'm not talking about, like, the fine hair. This is a lot of hair. It's an abnormal amount of facial hair for a woman. Um, and so don't listen to me talk about facial hair and hair removal and feel like you need to be shaving your face it's not a thing. It's not a thing. And even if you do have an abnormal amount of facial hair, nobody needs to remove it. I want to remove it. I don't feel comfortable with it. And I'm looking for ways to get rid of it. And I will share as I go. But I'm enjoying those two as aftercare products. Man alive, if you're still with me after that ramble. So, um, La Cura Hot Cloth Cleanser. This is the original one that's supposed to be like the Liz Earl. I don't think I've used this one before. I've had the orange one and the pink one. Really enjoying this one. As a basic cleanser, I like this, I like the vitamin C and the radiant one from Superdrug, they're all basically the same thing. If you just want something to cleanse, remove your makeup, you can't go wrong with that. I think if you're going to do like a double cleanse, your second cleanser could be something a bit nicer. I do one single cleanse, 
yes, it's nice to use kind of, I've got an Elemis balm that I use when I want to feel a bit bougie. For me, I don't think they make a tremendous amount of difference. I would spend money on like serums, treatments, moisturizers, that kind of thing. Um, and I think that cleanser is really, really good. I was sent the Ameliorate Transforming Body Lotion a couple of months ago, and then they sent me, I wanted to say they sent me the new version. Yes, they did, I'm not losing it, right? So I didn't know from looking at this because it doesn't say anywhere on here, but it does have a different color. So this is the original and this is the orange blossom. I had to Google it. I think the reason they've done this is that there are lots of people who don't like the scent of this product. It doesn't bother me at all, it's quite musky, but it's not a it's not a, an offensive scent to me. It's not like a sweet scent. Um, I don't even really know what it smells like, but it's, it is a very musky scent. Um, I, I don't mind the original, it's fine, but I was using this last night, hair in my mouth, I was using this last night, the, the new Orange Blossom, and it's, it's not a massive difference. It is, it's fresher, it is fresher, but it's still got that musk. I do think that it's a lighter scent, but there's still, there's still that lingering ameliorate scent to it. So if you don't like that, you're not going to like the new fragrances. It is what it is. Um, if you weren't, if you weren't particularly bothered, I probably would choose this over this because it is just slightly lighter, but like I say, it doesn't really bother me anyway. So that aside, um, the purpose of this is it's basically got the same kind of thing, you know, like your um, glycolic, acid, glycolic acid, that kind of thing that you would use on your face. It's that kind of product, but it's within a moisturiser that then smooths your skin. I love this stuff. I am currently trialling four or five different smoothing body lotions, and I'm going to do a video. I just really want to pinpoint the differences for you and really kind of weigh up because there's different costs involved. Currently, this is the front runner. Um, and that's, it's not the cheapest necessarily, but it is the front runner. I like how quickly it absorbs. Like I say, the scent is a big thing for some people. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, and it works really, really quickly. So I tend to get like rashy type spots on the sides of my thighs, kind of like hip thigh area. I don't know what it's all about, but I'll get like one or two and they're like proper spots. Um, and I'll use this, and within a couple of days, they're gone completely. That tends to be my particular use for this. That tends to be the thing that I'm like, wow, okay, that makes quite a big difference. I don't have the little bumps on my skin. I do sometimes get um, dryness on my arms and here as well, and it really helps with that. It hydrates, it seems to smooth everything. It's kind of like an exfoliating body lotion. So in those areas, it, it's nice too. Sometimes I'll use it on my chest. One thing it is um, important to remember is that anywhere that you use it may be more sensitive to the sun. So the same thing with using acids on your face, it basically is the same kind of thing. You need to make sure that if you're not covered up, you're wearing SPF on those areas because they may be more susceptible to sun damage. But um, I wanted to just throw it out there because if you've never heard of this before, which would be surprising because lots of people talk about it, but if you've never heard this before, it's around this time of year that people are interested in trying to like smooth and perfect their skin and make everything feel nicer. I think this is a really good product for that. Last beauty thing is the nail polish that I'm wearing right now because I've had so many questions about it. Right, I'm gonna tell you what it's called. What is it called? Why can't I find what this thing is called? It says Rita Aura on it, but I can't see a name. Hmm, oh, Orangey Vibe. Right, so I kept telling people, a couple of people messaged me on um, Instagram and said, what is the nail polish you've been wearing you should, recently? And I said, it's new, it's Rimmel, it's orange something, but I couldn't remember what it was called. It's orangey vibe. It's kind of a coral orange type color. And it would appear this is somehow in collaboration with Rita Aurora. Who knew? Um, but I'm really, really liking it. It is more chip resistant than a lot of the ones that I have. Essie is the worst. Um, I've even got it on my toes right now. Really quite liking it, but it's still not 100% chip resistant because here we go. I'm actually having my nails done next week. I was like, am I gonna do it? Am I not gonna do it? I quite like having the short nails, but the big thing for me, especially filming videos and especially with me vlogging every single day on my other channel is I, I hate chip nails. It's something that was instilled in me by my auntie when I was a kid, like, it's terrible to have chip nails. It, this is not, this is completely, this was 
information given to me as a child that stuck with me. No judgment. If you have chip nails all the time, power to you. But I cannot live with chip nails. And especially filming stuff where I'm like, and look at this, and look at this. I feel like my nails have to look nice. And it was always a barrier. It was always something where if I was filming something, I had to think in advance, am I going to film tomorrow? I'll paint my nails tonight. If I'm going to film today, I've got to make time in the morning to paint my nails. It's not a quick process. Um, it was always a real pain. And so having my nails done all the time, it was almost like waking up and having a full face of makeup in your head and all the time. It's like you're ready to film constantly. And um, when the appointment came up, I was like, yeah, I probably will. I can't do gels. They will chip just as quickly as regular nail polish on me or they'll peel off and then I can't touch it on myself. So I like to have acrylics. Um, and I've gone like long, short. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I might have something funky just for fun. Yeah, I'm gonna have my nails done next week. I'm quite excited about it. I do again wanna point out that I am still, still playing on a nightly, almost nightly basis, um, my time at Porsche, which is this game. Again, it was Brogan Tate, Brogan Tate XO. If you don't follow her on YouTube, you should. Um, she was the one who switched me on to this, no pun intended. Uh, and I can't really explain what the game is. It's somewhere between Animal Crossing and Zelda. There's a lot of farming involved. There's a lot of collection of things and, and like building things, the story progression, but it feels like an endless game. It feels like I could play this game forever. I don't know what the final point of the game is. And it's a few years old now, but it just feels like there's no finish and little tasks keep coming up. Well, now we need to do this. Now we need to build this. Now we need, and I've been playing for weeks and weeks and weeks and I don't feel like I'm coming anywhere near the end of the game. So I'm really enjoying that because it, I, I like putting in my time. It's why I liked Animal Crossing so much. I like putting in my time to something that will continue I don't get anything from completing a game. I like Zelda, but I don't enjoy fighting. The combat in this game is very, very minimal, super easy. Um, it's, it's not anything like Zelda, but it's got, it's got the combat, which means it makes it a little bit more interesting, but it's kind of optional, you know? But I've never completed a Zelda game because I don't like the combat and it's much, much harder. I can't, I just can't. And um, so I'll do all of the side things that I can possibly do until I get to a wall where I need to do all of the fighting. Whereas with this, I feel like the whole thing is progressing at the pace that I want it to. If you want to ignore all of the tasks and all of the things that are happening for a few days, you can and just play other little games. And there is a relationship element of it. It's just really, really fun and seemingly endless. I don't really have anything to talk about Netflix-wise this week or like TV-wise this week um, because we've kind of just continued to keep watching. We've gone back to watching The American Office of an evening and, oh, I know one thing I wanna recommend. If you do have a Netflix subscription, Thunder Force is fantastic. Netflix original movies recently have been a bit pants and Melissa McCarthy movies recently have not been the best, um, but Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer are two middle-aged women who are given superpowers and by the end of it, also Jason Bateman's in it as a bad guy, amazing. By the end of it, I thought this could absolutely be a series. This is a really funny movie. It was really clever. I just really, really enjoyed it. And I think more so because I didn't have massively high expectations and it surpassed them by a long way. So if you haven't watched it, family friendly, would recommend. Um, and that's it for this week. I feel like it was a really long one. Um, apologies for those of you who like these to be short and snappy, but I know, like me, many of you um, watch these while you're doing other things. So, hi there while you're doing your washing up. Um, anyway, that's going to be it for today. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. There's going to be the first Shopping Sunday back this Sunday. Um, and tomorrow, as you watch this, uh, on Saturday, I'm actually going to Meadow Hall. So if I can brave Primark, then maybe next week we'll do a Primark shop with me. Um, but we're kind of slightly easing ourselves out of our homes, going out and doing the things we used to do. So I thought I would bring back the shopping Sundays and we'll see how we go. We'll see. But look out for that on Sunday and I will see you guys then. Bye. <laughs>